It's like all the winter holidays combined, but for your ears. We've got some tech to talk about. Now, I've been running the FIO Q3 for a bit, and it's a great solution to improve headphone audio playback. A part of the conclusion right here at the top of this video, powerful amps, low distortion, and flexible options for cabled playback. This thing is a winner. So I really want to use this video as something of an ambassador conversation for folks that might not be as into nicer audio gear. And I could definitely use some help sharing this video as YouTube likes to sit on this kind of stuff from my channel. For those of you a little savvier, a little more well-versed in audiophile kit, you can skip to this part of the video where we get back on track talking about the Q3. Allow me to digress for a moment. I've personally taken some of this audio conversation for granted in the past. I started writing a script recently as an overview on the topic. And as I would explain one part of the topic, it would require another explanation and then another topic overview and so on and so on and so on. That script started hitting 8,000 words, which really can't be one video. So I'm revising how I want to talk about this stuff. That's when I realized it really sunk in how poorly audio has been explained to consumers for a long while now. We don't have many ambassadors in the premium audio space, and it takes more educational legwork than visuals and displays. Now we can keep tacking numbers and pluses to HDR. We can plop down 4K and 8K labels. It's not always accurate, but we can lead consumers along a little easier, you walk into a big box store and see a bunch of oversaturated displays on a wall when you're shopping a new TV. Audio, speakers and headphones just can't work like that. Worse still, our mobile devices have incredible screens now, but we've been serving up some fairly mediocre solutions for audio since the earliest days of portable media players. The idea is a manufacturer saves some cash by including some disposable earbuds and consumers have something to listen with out of the box, but people who care will upgrade from there. In practice, it's been far more likely that folks just out of habit stick with the disposable starter buds that come in the box and that's their audio education. We've ushered generations of tech users into mediocre audio this way. And so it's no surprise that mid-range Bluetooth solutions garner such huge reactions from consumers for audio quality. From disposable earbuds to mediocre headphone jacks and consumer bare minimum streaming quality. The majority and the popularity of that fashion statement then influences the tech commentary. We've been waging this fight since the early days of LG Quad DAX. Tech influencers who don't really understand audio catering to an audience of consumers who also don't really understand audio. And instead of saying like, hey, this isn't my thing, Thing, those influencers instead try to maintain some kind of authority. So I'm an expert on phone specs and I don't think audio is a big deal, so it must not be a big deal. You can see it in some of those reviews. They come to incorrect conclusions on the data, things like filtering and EQ manipulation, but also try to maintain their authority, which then reinforces the bias of their audience in an ugly little spiral and nothing really gets any better in a way. I can't blame them. When we look at labels like HDR10+, even if the image and display quality aren't really better, consumers can count on ever more vibrant and saturated images. There's a more easily grasped difference. There is a high res audio label that should help guide us, but it's a little more difficult to realize the improvements of high res audio. A player might get that label, but if it's not paired with good headphones and good audio data, then the experience will probably sound like any other player. Worse for phones, we'll see that label on devices that can actually play back high quality files, but often have underperforming converters and amps. So I don't blame consumers for thinking this might be voodoo or an extravagance. It really must seem to consumers like the emperor isn't wearing any clothes and we're all just patting each other on the back for spending a lot of money to flex expensive gear. Audio snobs like me can be insufferable about tone and color and conversations about minute and subtle differences in audio reproduction. But to fixate on some of the gatekeeping and deep in the weeds conversations means consumers miss out on the wealth 
of incredible options that really take audio consumption up to a higher tier. And these solutions aren't wallet busting like they used to be, especially compared against a whole new generation of premium fashion label wireless gear. Good audio doesn't mean $550 so your headset pairs with your phone easier. I think it's kind of sad how many people I encounter who really haven't heard a good representation of their favorite songs. How wide-eyed they get when they listen on some of my average gear and how they shrug that off after like it's probably too difficult and expensive and it's too much of a hassle to get that better audio quality. It's actually in this mobile and portable space that we've seen some incredible improvements and new tech that helps bring prices down to more reasonable tiers, which brings me back to the Fio Q3. This is a little hip flask slab of audio awesome. I'm not much into reading specs, but what Fio is aiming for here is a purpose-built, specific solution to enable high-quality cabled playback. Better still, this isn't just an amp. It doesn't just make another output louder. When connected to a USB-C port, the Q3 handles all the audio processing, which enables cleaner, louder, better playback. On top of the unit, we have a trio of outputs. The 3.5 millimeter can also act as an input if you want to use the Q3 purely as an amp. The other two are balanced outputs. The volume dial is wonderfully firm. It doesn't pop in your head when you turn the unit on. It doesn't click your ears. And the LED changes color based on the quality of audio being played. On the rear, we have a bass boost switch that lifts the lows deliciously about 6 dB. There's a gain switch, two stages for the volume control. So you might not need the full output of the amp and this walks back some of that volume. So you don't blow out your headphone drivers or your ears. That gain button also toggles the two filtering modes, helping you tailor playback to your specific tastes. And there's also a charge switch because this connects over USB-C. That's how you charge the Q3's battery, but you might not want it to draw power from all of the devices you might hook it up to. The Q3 is rated for around 10 hours of playback and in high amp mode connected to 3.5 millimeter headphones, I easily got nine hours on its first full charge. Like I said at the top of this video, video, the Q3 is a fantastic audio processing unit, properly powering headphones and earbuds. It's like the music you listen to wakes up. You'll have to pardon the flowery language here because the alternative is a lot of physics. Beyond just louder and quieter, good audio gear handles a variety of playback issues better. Often when tech influencers shrug off better audio, it's because they've been burned before on promises that didn't quite pan out. Oh, my music got more colorful and that soundstage opened up. This must be because of some lame EQ filter juicy mode, like on that one old phone I reviewed. It's not really really what the music sounds like. But that's the thing, if you've trained your ears on poorer output solutions, even when using nicer headphones, those lamer amps might not have been driving the headphones well enough to properly reproduce the full frequency spread of your audio. So we use emotional terms like warmth, to describe this phenomenon, but it is grounded in some real science. If you really haven't heard your music before, this would seem like trickery, but measuring what I can from the Q3, it's not manipulating the music data. It's not computational audio. It's not adding or subtracting frequency information. It's properly playing back everything in that music data. It's kind of sad these days, how that's a rarity. The internal processing chain that FIO diagrams looks very similar to solutions which often are significantly more expensive. And getting to the last step before the signal is sent out to your headphones, this is the second product this year I've reviewed utilizing a THX AAA amp. Increasingly, I'm inclined to point to this kind of hardware as a shortcut for consumers who really want to hear some differences in audio playback. Where untrained ears might not be able to hear the differences between high bit rate MP3 and higher quality FLAC files, almost all decently healthy ears can hear the difference between better amps. And once you take a little time to retrain your ears, those other benefits like lower distortion and better signal to noise ratios contribute even more to the listening experience. The long and short of it, plugging in some nice cans that need a little bit of power and listening to some solid FLAC rips, the Q3 
drives a fantastic listening experience. It's flexible enough to move from mobile device to a proper computer. It's a component that really drives home the idea that listening to music can be the activity. Uh, music doesn't always need to be the background noise for another activity. And on top of that, it's just killer to drive this kind of audio reproduction for movies and gaming. A lot of work goes into that sound design, and like music, you might not really hear it on other portable solutions. Of course, I have a few concerns. Specialty hardware like this excels in some areas, but might require some changes in behavior or other compromises. First, it's a bit big. This is a pocket computer dedicated to audio processing and output. Accomplishing that at a higher tier of performance means needing the space for properly isolated components and a battery big enough to power them. To that end, my issues with the Q3 are more focused on that mobile lifestyle. None of these issues really manifest when you're sitting and listening in a controlled space and you're connected to a computer or a laptop. That's really well taken care of. One lifestyle drawback, the connectors on the Q3 are primed for output quality. But there is no input channel that I can find for mobile microphones. So headsets or cables with built-in microphones, when connected, your phone calls are going to come from the phone's built-in microphones, which can be a small step less convenient. It minimizes distortion and imbalance in your playback, but it's less handy on the go. Also, the USB cable is finicky. Feel supplies a cable and trying to set it up for the first listen, I thought the unit was broken. It turns out the cable is designed to work in one direction for mobile devices. It can get flaky when using third-party USB-C to USB-C cables. It's super clear on a PC or an iPhone because those cables only work in one direction. You got a USB-C and a lightning connector. But it's an odd situation when we're looking at symmetrical looking USB cables to see that you gotta plug it in in one way. And for a mobile focused experience, something that is designed to live in a pocket with the phone or strapped to the back of a phone case, I think Fio has done an incredible job of shielding this hardware from cell phone interference. But I did hear the occasional blips coming from 5G enabled phones. Similar to the speakers in my office, I'm hearing more of that distortion and chatter coming from these early 5G phones. Feel likely designed the Q3 around some of the established LTE handsets on the market. And we should also expect that future 5G devices will handle these issues better. We're already seeing some potential improvements on Qualcomm's next generation chipsets. There are a number of of reviews praising the Q3's ability to block cell phone signals. And I believe those reviews are accurate, but I'm inclined to assume a lot of those reviews were posted before 5G enabled iPhones were shipping to consumers. It really shouldn't be. It's not on FIO alone to fix those issues, but it is something to be aware of depending on what phone you're looking to pair with the Q3. One last consideration, and one I feel I have to share on all nicer audio products. This is not unique to the FIO. The amp on the Q3 is powerful. It's a little intoxicating how sound perks up. It gets more vibrant. And if you've trained your ears with bad listening habits on mediocre audio hardware, this can exacerbate those bad habits. Using better audio hardware is an opportunity to retrain your ears. You shouldn't need to blow out the volume to improve fidelity, to block noise around you, and to enjoy a higher quality experience. And this is the kind of hardware we can point to enabling better quality and healthier habits. Whew. All right, I've rambled on quite a bit. We should probably wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the FIO? Q3. This was such a fun year for great audio tech, and this was a solid year for FIO. I've been a fan of the brand for a while now, especially using their standalone media players. But these new options reflect the reality of using pocket computers as our primary digital life interfaces, and how we can't count on phones anymore to fulfill premium audio experiences. The Q3 accomplishes an incredible task of offloading audio activities, is so powerful, it should easily outlast a single phone purchase, if not three, and manages to do all this 
at a very reasonable price. Seriously, this kind of audio processing at $150 is incredible. Paired with some solid cans like my DT770s, we're right in the ballpark of premium tier Bluetooth solutions. When nice wireless earbuds and cans are hitting that $300 price tier, it's silly to act like cabled solutions in that price ballpark are too extravagant for consumers to consider. Better still, the $300 you might put towards a solution like this will probably long outlast the smaller batteries and compromises found in wireless gear. Bluetooth isn't really more convenient, it just trades conveniences. Hardware longevity is a kind of convenience. Not having to rebuy components as often is also more convenient. This is definitely a premium accessory and not a casual off the cuff kind of purchase, but it's one that earns its price tag very well. In years past, I'd be reluctant to recommend something like this as a starter solution. It, it might've been too intimidating or too much of a premium cost over cheaper cabled solutions. But as we continue down this path, devaluing, the audio experience and the audio conversation, watching Apple release $550 over ear cans, I feel we need to push back harder against tech influencer apathy. Our ears deserve better. And this is an excellent platform even for beginners. The most novice users will get an immediate benefit from this hardware, even when paired with lower cost IEMs and earbuds. The more established audiophiles will appreciate the finer nuances of what this device can deliver. Honestly, the Q3's most direct competition might be internally at FIO with a wonderful Swiss Army knife audio gadget, the BTR5. The Q3 has a more powerful amp and lower distortion, especially when we're comparing wired against wireless playback, but the BTR5 BTR5 is more flexible for including wired and wireless playback and is a step more convenient for offering microphone input support for cabled headset microphones. It's in that conversation between quality and convenience where I feel a consumer can make that choice to satisfy their needs and their wants. Bluetooth headphones are starting to offer more variety. That still pales in comparison to the huge number of incredible cabled headphone options available. And dollar for dollar, there are still significant arguments to be made for cabled headphones with adapters outperforming comparably priced Bluetooth solutions. The choice is key here, especially for how personal headphones are. Everyone's ears are different, and we want to improve quality while providing the tools to empower healthier listening habits. The FIO Q3 joins that conversation in a big way. I'll of course leave some links down below this video where you can find more info on the FIO Q3. Maybe shop one of these bad boys online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos. Like I said at the top, the sharing is critical and subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I greatly appreciate those of you who do look at the links in the description below. Maybe check out some of my merch, you kind of peruse through some shirts and some mugs. That kind of stuff really does help keep production running on this channel. You can also check out somegadgetguy.com for a full list of all of my affiliates and partnerships. Or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. An amazing collection of fun techie pals. They're basically the best people on the internet. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the web at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, uh, Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.